diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. I'm Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds, and today I have with me Jake Funk, who's a running back out of Maryland. How's it going, sir? It's going great, Jimmy. I appreciate you having me on. Hey, man, it's, it's, it's definitely awesome to have a local kid on here. I mean, a Damascus guy, um, a, 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 you know, totally, totally love that program there. I mean, uh, I love it now, but I mean, you know, 25, 30 years ago, I didn't because mm-hmm. we were rivals. Um, so obviously, um, I'll give you guys all that. Um, part of a great um, history there that you kind of had going. Um, 50, I think you started like the, the winning streak, didn't you? Yeah. Um, my senior year, we were fortunate enough to be able to go 14-0. and 0, And uh, we won the first title of the three-peat that we had. And then ultimately, three out or four out of the last five years, um, they've won the title. So... Um, was very fortunate enough to be able to play with some really good um, players along the way and have some really good coaches. And, you know, we were able to put the th- uh, do the thing. We were able to, you know, put all the pieces together and uh, we went a long way with it. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you guys had a just I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of uh, great talent coming out of there now. Um, I think like the number one rated guy ended up going out to Clemson yep. this past year um, and, uh, you know, just a very great program. Um, so, um, let's kind of move forward from that. Um, tell me a little bit about your journey to Maryland. I mean, how'd you get to Maryland? Um, my journey to Maryland was pretty rough. Uh, um, I went into my junior year, uh, didn't have any scholarship offers, was kind of consider myself a late bloomer. Um, after my junior year started picking up like a couple Conference USA, group of five scholarship offers along with the Ivy Leagues and military academies. Um, didn't really have any interest to power fives until the summer going into my senior year where I had Wisconsin offer me at linebacker. Um, and that was my only power five offer going into the year. Um, Maryland in the spring of my junior year pretty much told me at the time that I wasn't a big 10 running back, um, that I wasn't big enough to be a linebacker on their team there wasn't enough uh film to offer me at safety um so really Maryland wasn't that interested in me at the time and then I got halfway through my senior year um and coach Loxley and coach Wild at the time um they really loved me um and they really wanted to offer me but couldn't get it by the head coach at the time and uh, halfway through my senior year uh the head coach ultimately got fired um, and Coach Loxley took over as the interim. So then Coach Lox, his one of his first uh, orders of duty when he got into office um, was to send the running back coach out to my high school practice, and they offered me the next day um, at running back. And then for me, like, I was so sick and tired of the recruiting process because I believe that I could play Power 5 football in my heart that I committed to Maryland within that week just to get the process over with. Um, pretty much – blindly committing to coach Loxley at the time um really um you know just kind of you know bet on myself um that I could play at that level and uh you know couldn't be happier with that decision yeah I mean you finished uh high school ball being named uh I guess Maryland Gatorade player of the year in 2015 Mm -hmm. so I mean obviously when that happens I mean uh you you start getting calls from people and I think it's great that um I think it's great that you stayed close to home, to be honest, because I mean, I, I feel like Maryland sometimes like they let some of the good uh, talent, you know, go to other, you know, places. Mm-hmm. But, um, I think it's great that you um, were able to stay in College Park. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, and I was able to meet a lot of the talent from around this area because a lot of them came to Maryland. Um, a lot of guys from PG County and Montgomery County as well. Um, we did a great job while I was there with recruiting guys to stay home. And I think they're doing a great job now as well with coach Loxley back uh, as the head coach. Right. So obviously, um, you know, you, you came in, I mean, there were a lot of schools that wanted you maybe to play different positions, but mm-hmm. you're, but you're a running back and you've been a running back, uh, you know, there for a while. Um, 
tell me a little bit about you as a running back. I mean, what's your, uh, what's your style of, you know, of being a running back? I mean, is there like, I don't know, maybe a player in the league that you would compare yourself to? Um, chat through that if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. For me, like I would consider myself a jack of all trades when it comes to being a running back. Um, I take pride in being able to do all things on the field, whether that's running, uh, receiving, blocking. Um, I take pride in all of that. My running style, I would say I'm more of a downhill one cut back. Um, and then going into like players that I, I don't try to compare myself or, um, you know, to any players in the NFL, but there are a couple guys that I try to emulate my game after and try to aspire to be like. And I would say two of the guys are Christian McCaffrey and Josh Jacobs. And I say that because those two guys are very versatile in what they do. They are all over the field. Um, you know, whether that's in the receiving game, whether that's in the run game, whether that's blocking for, you know, edge for uh, jet sweeps, whether that's blocking and protecting the quarterback, they're all over the field at all times. And it's something that I aspire to be like at the next level. Great. So, I mean, um, you know, right now, I guess the next thing in line for you is uh, pro days. Um, when's your pro day coming up, man? So my pro day is next week. It's March 10th. Um, and, you know, right now we, you know, have gonna a couple. Going to be here very soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got, what, six days. Um, but, yeah, we got a couple guys that are going to be there with me and, you know, ready to just go out there and show the scouts what I can do. Right. So, I mean, do you have any uh, goals for your pro day? I mean, do you have any numbers that you're trying to achieve or what's what's the ultimate thing that you're trying to do? I have, I have goals all in my head that I'm not going to say, but, um, you know, I'll let the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, but the, you know, I, really, I just want to show the scouts that I am way more athletic than people give me credit for. Um, I think there's a lot of people that look at me as for who I am and, you know, say that, you know, he's, you know, stereotype me as a non-athletic person. And, you know, it's something that I, you know, take a lot of pride in just being able to, you know, show people that I'm not the, you know, stereotypical guy that I would, that they categorize me as. So, so uh, I mean, again, like the whole uh, idea is to kind of showcase your ability to, to some of these uh, pro teams to see that you, you can, um, you know, compete at that level. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you were able to do fairly recently was go down to uh, Texas um, for the College Gridiron Showcase. Um, tell me just a little bit about that event, if you don't, if you don't mind. Um, the, the College Gridiron Showcase was an amazing event. I um, was, was very fortunate enough to be able to get invited to it. Um, went down there for three or four days and sat through a bunch of seminars and got to talk to NFL scouts as well as did some on-the-field drills. Um, and in front of those scouts. And I mean, they, it was really well run. Um, the, the, they did a great job in managing the whole entire event. Ultimately, we had zero COVID cases throughout the entire event, which they were really proud about. Um, and really, you know, I was very, very fortunate to just be able to just, just be given the opportunity to go down there, compete, and really get to talk and, you know, give my story and give um, what I could bring to these NFL teams and, you know, be able to show that and, um, talk that to the scouts. So, I mean, did any scout give you any feedback or, or any maybe crazy question or anything? I mean, does it seem you know fairly straightforward? It was it was pretty straightforward. A lot of them were just you know background questions, um, and then obviously you know the the big questions for me were just my you know my injury history with my ACLs. Um, that was something that I had to talk about with every single team. Um, for quite a while. Um, and they talked about everything that comes with that. Um, and, you know, I was able to answer every question thoroughly. And uh, really, you know, I hope that I can show that, you know, I, I am confident in my knees and I'm confident in my abilities to be able to uh, stay healthy in the league. And that, you know, even though I did tear my ACL twice, that uh, I am more than I was before ACLs. Um, I'm a better player in all aspects of the game after I've tore my ACL twice than I was before and it's something that I promoted to the scouts saying that like the tape speaks for itself if you look at me my freshman and sophomore year at Maryland how I ran the ball versus my fifth year senior year completely different back um, and you know I, I you know I kept trying to emulate or just trying to you know 
explain to them that I wouldn't be in this position right now if I didn't tear my ACL twice. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, another player um, who ended up, get, you know, tear, you know, busting up both of his knees and you know, really had a phenomenal career, still doing well, is Adrian mm. Peterson. Um, yeah. That's that's who comes to mind for me. I mean, um, I mean, if he's able to do it and come back, I mean, granted, you know, yes, he's superhuman and all that, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it can be done, uh, and you know, people really need to know, um, you know, that um, where you are with those um, with that injury, are you fine? I mean, are you moving well i am more than fine um i'm the best shape i've ever felt the fastest the strongest um the you know the most uh well-rounded i've ever felt as a athlete as a football player um you know so i mean i like i said i i think that I, because of those acls i've gotten better um all around uh, and that's you know a test to you know being able to just you know get to work and just consistently doing work over and over and over again to try to better yourself yeah, I mean, one thing that I've heard from people that have had some injuries is um, it allows you to actually gain a different perspective mm -hmm. and to kind of, you know, understand the game a little bit more and also take on a, the role of a leader, um, you know, kind of on the sidelines. I mean, do you see yourself as a leader on the football field? I mean, and if so, like what kind of a leader are you? For sure. Um, I would definitely say that I'm a leader. Um, I, I take pride in leading a team. Um, I would say I'm, I'm a mix of a, uh, you know, a vocal leader as well as somebody who leads by example. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing for me um, when it comes to leadership is, like you said, I have a different perspective of the game um, compared to a lot of people because of my ACL injuries. And really, I kind of use the, that as a way to lead through appreciation um, because a lot of, lot of guys around me, you know, who – take it, take the game for granted. Um, you know, a lot of the times and I would see that sometimes in Maryland, I see that a little bit, you know, with a couple of my friends here and there. Right. Um, but you know, the big thing that I try to take into leadership is, you know, just appreciate, um, the day that you're given and being able to go out on the practice field. Cause it's not always fun. It's not. Um, and I mean, just being able to, you know, to step on that field and appreciate things more is some way that I try to lead. And I try to, you know, you know, give to the people around me, because really, if you're, if you appreciate what you're doing, you're going to have more fun doing it. Um, you're going to, you know, take every day, you know, and for what it is and make the most of it. And I, I think that's something that um, I brought to the University of Maryland this year. And I think it's something that um, I hope they continue to bring to that school and, you know, with the leaders that are still at that program right now. Great. Um, so Jake, one of the things that I kind of wanted to, uh, you know, allow you to do is, um, Talk to me about a couple of the, of the moments that you had there at, at Maryland. Um, one of the ideas that I have is mm -hmm. um, think about maybe, um, you know, you as a student of the game, you know, studying your opponent. Um, has there been, an, a, a, you know, maybe a moment where like your study in the film room really played off in a game time situation? Um, kind of walk me For through sure. the, an example there, if you don't mind. Yeah, for sure. I mean, against Minnesota, they brought a uh... – I, I don't, I don't know. I'll try to describe it the best I can, but they brought like a gut X blitz with the strong safety and the Mike linebacker and the safety, um, the safety would creep down to about seven yards depth right over top of the Mike linebacker every single time that they brought this blitz. So me and our quarterback Talia, we watched this over and over again in the film room. And as soon as it happened in the game, we were able to point it out, completely change the protection, and it allowed for me to be able to, you know, pick up the uh, the safety blitz with ease um, because we both studied this in the film. I remember talking to him next to me about it, saying it's coming. Uh, safety gut X is coming. And, you know, it, that's one of those things where, you know, your film study translates to on the field and it just makes it easier I and mean, it slows the game down a little bit. Um, so, yeah. And what about maybe your best moment on the field? I mean, What's been maybe your best game or, or, or best highlight that you want to share with uh, your fans? So, I mean, I would say my best game was against Minnesota. Um, but my best moment in college, I would have to say, was one, beating Penn State this year. But really, you know, scoring on a personal level, scoring on the field that my dad played on. Um, my dad played at Penn State back in the late 70s, early 80s. 
Um, and, you know, just being able to, you know, step in the end zones where he was able, where he played way back when, um, and just being able to get a win on that same field that he played on is something that I will um, always remember for the rest of my life. Great. So Jake, um, let's kind of step off of the football field for just a minute. Um, tell me maybe who you are, at, you know, outside of being a, a football player. I mean, maybe what you did there as a student or, or anything else that you feel like, um, you know, people need to know about you. Um, I would say I'm a really outgoing, uh, fun person. I would say, you know, you know, when it comes to school, um, I graduated Maryland in three and a half years with an undergraduate degree in kinesiology. Um, and then I just recently started my uh, master's in business and management uh, this past fall. And then I'm planning on finishing it um, in the coming off seasons. Um, and, you know, really, I mean, I would just say that, you know, I'm a guy who, you know, is, you know, very, very serious about what he does on his day-to-day -day basis. That's kind of uh, my MO. I take every day um, with appreciation for the day that has been given to me um, and really try to make the most out of every single opportunity that you get, whether that's football, whether that's off the field, and really, you know, just trying to make the most of the day. And that's kind of how I live my life. Um, and that's something that, you know, I, you know, it is ingrained in my core. Gotcha. Awesome. Uh, so I do want to just kind of, uh, you know, leave it up to you to give some shout outs to, to some people that have meant a lot to you along the way. You know, maybe somebody who taught you a great lesson, um, you, mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, family, you know, friends, uh, coaches, teammates. Um, who do you want to give a little bit of love to right now? I would just say my immediate family, my, my mom and dad and two brothers. I mean, they um, really have been there for me through the ups and the downs. Um, you know, and obviously the last two years of my life have been pretty tough with the ACL injuries. So each one of them played a huge role in uh, being able to, you know, talk to you about going into the NFL and being able to be in this situation that I'm in. You know, each one of them, um, you know, was able to really do their part in supporting me in the best way that they can. And I can't thank each and every one of them enough. Um, for everything that they've done for me. And it's, you know, definitely the, the one shout out that I would give was to my uh, immediate family. Awesome. I mean, definitely got to give uh, some love there to your family. Mm -hmm. um, so um, as we begin to wrap up, I mean, again, I always ask everybody the why question, you know, why do you play football? Maybe why you started to play football? Um, why you play now? What's like been your main, main motivation? For me, um, you know, I fell in love with the game when I was a kid, um, you know, was able to use this game as a way to take me to places where I didn't even know if I would be able to take myself. Um, and, you know, I, I'm very thankful for this game. And, you know, a big thing, reason why I play this game and why I'm here, right here, uh, why I'm speaking to you, why I'm in this position that I'm in is because, you know, I had a little dream when I was an eight year old kid um, and that was to play in the NFL. and I want to be able to, you know, look in the mirror and, you know, tell that eight year old kid that he was right, that, you know, no matter what happened to him, um, you know, no matter what he went through, that he was able to get the job done and do what he wanted to do in life. And um, that's just, you know, been my motivation as to why I play this game is because I fell in love with it as a kid. And, you know, that, you know, that kid had a that kid had a dream. And I really, you know, just play for that inner child in me that always um, wanted something bigger. Great. And I mean, I realized that you sat down with a lot of guys at the CGS, you sat down with some scouts, you know, had some interviews, um, but maybe not with every single team in the league. Um, so I want to just give you a, an opportunity to give your pitch to everybody out there, you know, all the, all the teams in the NFL and any other professional team, I mean, why should they take a chance on you, sign you? What kind of teammate would you be? I mean, I would be, you know, I would argue I would be the best teammate that there is. Um, I'm a guy who's supportive of every single person on the team, no matter what. Um, I'm a guy who is going to come in and do whatever it takes to win, um, whether that's, you know, pr mental preparation, physical preparation. I'm a guy who, you know, takes every day seriously. Um, I'm a guy who can go out on the field when you talk about football and a guy who can deliver in all aspects of the game. Um, I was able to play all five special teams um, at Maryland throughout my four year, five years there. 
um, punt, punt return, kickoff, kick return, and even field goal. Um, you know, I, I recorded 30 tackles in two years uh, on kickoff and punt. I also returned kicks on special teams. And then at the running back position, you know, I, I like I said earlier, I'm a jack of all trades. I, I take pride in being the most versatile guy on the field. I want to be a guy that can play running back, run in between the tackles, but also be able to um, come outside in the slot and be able to run a route against the linebacker and be a mismatch for that linebacker. Um, and, you know, really, you know, you're going to get somebody who's going to give it their all no matter what circumstances. Um, and it's somebody that's going to um, produce in every opportunity that he gets. Great. I mean, I kind of just have this memory in my head. I mean, several years back, um, you know, there was a running back that came in the league. No one knew him. He was a late round pick. And he ends up making this fantastic tackle on special teams, talking about Terrell Davis. Mm -hmm. And of course he, you know, after making that play, I mean, he just, he gets moved up, you know, the depth chart and actually has his moment and ends up with a hall of fame career. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I do think that, you know, you do have a lot of things that you bring to the table, like you said, I mean, a little bit of versatility everywhere, um, you know, just being able to contribute, um, you know, on special teams or in any aspect as a running back. I mean, that you could definitely do it all, you know, whether it be a power back or, or you know, out there as a blocker or a receiver. I think there's a lot that you bring to the table. People just needed to give you an opportunity. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully they give you that. Um, Jake, this has been cool. I appreciate um, your time. Um, definitely a, a great story of yours to share. I hope people um, take take the opportunity just to um, you know check out your tape, see what you bring. Um, but it's been great. Thanks. I, I appreciate you having me. All right. Again, this is Jake Funk, running back, Maryland. Uh, check him out.